In April 1829, Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery began working together on the translation of the gold plates here on Joseph and Emma's small farm in Harmony, Pennsylvania. We still continue the work of translation when in the ensuing month, we on a certain day went into the woods to pray and inquire of the Lord concerning baptism for the remission of sins that we found mentioned in the translation of the plates. A lot of people uh, have surmised that the reason they're seeking the ordinance of baptism is because they recognize the need for baptism themselves. And I think that's only partially true. Uh, we don't know uh, if Oliver was ever baptized in any religious society. Uh, I think we can safely say Joseph Smith wasn't. But that wasn't the point. The point was, if you look in the books of Mosiah, Alma, Helaman, and Third Nephi, you see baptism mentioned over and over and over again. In the book of Mosiah, one of those forms of baptize is mentioned 13 times. In the book of Alma, it's mentioned 17 times. In the book of Helaman, eight times. And in the book of Third Nephi, 33 times. There are 11 times in Third Nephi 11, baptized, baptized, baptizing is mentioned. So it's clear they are becoming indoctrinated with the need for baptism. After writing the account given of the Savior's ministry to the remnant of the seed of Jacob upon this continent, it was easy to be seen. None had authority from God to administer the ordinances of the gospel. Oliver Cowdery. They would have picked up four reasons why baptism is so important. The first one of these is they would have recognized baptism is absolutely essential for the remission of sins. The second one they would have learned was that baptism marks entrance into the church. It, it is the gateway, if you will, in, into the church. The third one is that the ordinance of baptism also qualifies one for salvation. It's salvific. And fourth, they would have recognized the need for proper authority. Joseph said they went into the woods to pray. Tax records and other historical evidence seems to indicate the only woods on Joseph's property would have been this sugar maple grove north of his house on Flat Creek. Some of the trees there today are over 200 years old. What joy! What wonder! What amazement! While the world was racked and distracted, while millions were groping as the blind for the wall, and while all men were resting upon uncertainty as a general mass, our eyes beheld, our ears heard, we listened, we gazed, we admired. Oliver Cowdery Oliver Cowdery's account of the visit of John the Baptist is included as a large uh, addendum, you might say, at the end of Joseph Smith's history in the Pearl Great Price. It's a fantastic account. And Oliver is clearly, uh, th th this is beyond anything he's had. This is obviously his first angelic en encounter. No question. He goes into great detail about the, the significance of this event in his own life and seeing an angelic being and his brightness, his glory, his, his words. He was just literally, uh, you know, almost transported to heaven to have this experience in his own life. While we were thus employed, praying and calling upon the Lord, a messenger from heaven descended in a cloud of light, and having laid his hands upon us, he ordained us, saying, Upon you, my fellow servants, in the name of Messiah, I confer the priesthood of Aaron, which holds the keys of the ministering of angels, and of the gospel of repentance, and of baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. And this shall never be taken again from the earth, until the sons of Levi do offer again an offering unto the Lord in righteousness. Joseph Smith. 
He didn't say, upon you, Joseph Smith, I confer the priesthood of Aaron, or I confer upon you, Oliver Cowdery. He said, upon you, my fellow servants. I think it was a joint ordination. This is the earliest phase of the restoration of the priesthood in our day. I think generally, when Mormons think of the restoration of the priesthood, they think of Peter, James, and John coming, the, the restoration of, of the Melchizedek priesthood, because that is the higher priesthood, but the first one was John the Baptist. Before this, there was no priesthood office and authority on the earth anymore, and after it, there was. And so you can see why both Oliver Cowdery and, and Joseph Smith would seem to focus more on the restoration of any authority rather than the subsequent restorations of other authorities, which they'll talk about, but it's this initial authority. And, and luckily, because uh, Oliver Cowdery uh, records it, we know the date of the Aaronic Priesthood Restoration, uh, that on May 15, 1829, um, uh, this angelic experience happens, and they're baptized. There's much more power manifested in the authority of the Aaronic Priesthood or less a priesthood than I think any of us have any idea in terms of how significant it is in the lives of members of the church and in helping us qualify, if that might be the word for salvation, remission of sins, and uh, eventually exaltation. He commanded us to go and be baptized and gave us directions that I should baptize Oliver Cowdery and that afterwards he should baptize me. Accordingly, we went and were baptized. I baptized him first, and afterwards he baptized me, after which I laid my hands upon his head and ordained him to the Aaronic Priesthood. And afterwards he laid his hands on me and ordained me to the same priesthood, for so we were commanded. Joseph Smith. So after John conferred this authority upon Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery, he instructed them to actually go and be baptized. Hence they would have then left the area of the Maple Grove or the Sugar Bush, made their way down to the Susquehanna, plenty of water, and there performed the ordinance uh, of baptism. Oliver was privileged to be the first person uh, to be baptized, and Joseph Smith the, uh, was then baptized by Oliver Cowdery. In John's instructions and, and teaching to Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery about the priesthood he conveyed, uh, he indicated to them that he acted under the authority of Peter, James, and John, who held the higher keys or the keys of the higher priesthood associated with what we, of course, know today as the Melchizedek priesthood. And he said that in, in a short time, that priesthood would be conferred upon them as well. It was President Joseph Fielding Smith who answered this question. He said, it is an important fact shown by direct acts and by implication in all the scriptures that God has done for men all that men cannot do for themselves to secure salvation. But he expects men to do all for themselves that is in their power. By this principle, it is contrary to the order of heaven instituted before the foundation of the earth for holy messengers who have passed through the resurrection or messengers who belong to the heavenly sphere to come to earth and perform work for men which they can do for themselves. The first one we know of is Samuel. Uh, his brother comes down in late May and uh, obviously he and Oliver told uh, Samuel about their experience with John the Baptist and that they now had authority to perform this saving ordinance of baptism under the authority they now held of the Aaronic priesthood or lesser priesthood. So Samuel's baptized. We know that um, in the month of June, Joseph baptizes his brother, uh, Hiram, uh, Peter Whitmer Jr., uh, David Whitmer. wasn't referred to as the Aaronic priesthood initially. Joseph Smith often referred to it as the lesser priesthood. 
Uh, it, this is uh, brought out in section uh, 84 of the Doctrine and Covenants given in September of 1832. Uh, those uh, passages talk about the lesser priesthood. Uh, it does say the priesthood of Aaron, uh, but it wasn't until 1835 when we get section 107 of the Doctrine and Covenants, the very first verse. He says, there are two priesthoods, namely the Melchizedek priesthood and the Aaronic priesthood.